Research in our laboratory is focused on hearing loss, and um, specifically we study the sensory cell in the inner ear that transduces sound energy into neural input to the brain. This is a model of the inner ear, and there are actually six organs in the inner ear. The snail-shaped cochlea is here, and this is the hearing organ. And there are five organs here in what's called the vestibular system that are responsible for balance function. Each of these six sensory organs in the inner ear utilizes as the sensory receptor cell a cell type that's called a hair cell, which is um, diagrammed here. It's called a hair cell because on the apical surface of the cell is a bundle of stiff actin-based stereocilia. And when the fluid spaces in the inner ear move, it causes this stereocilia bundle to be deflected. And that deflection opens a mechanically gated ion channel that depolarizes this cell and causes the cell to release neurotransmitter. And that neurotransmitter is then um, sent as neural input to the brain. And each of these sensory hair cells is completely surrounded in the inner ear by another cell type, which is schematized here in green. And these are called supporting cells. And supporting cells are glia-like cells that serve functions that are reminiscent of both astrocytes and microglia in the central nervous system. And sensory hair cells are susceptible to death from a variety of stresses. These include aging, certain genetic mutations, exposure to too much noise can definitely kill these cells. And in our lab, we study hair cell death that is caused by exposure to therapeutic drugs that are given in the clinic to treat life-threatening disorders. And these drugs have as a side effect that they're toxic to these sensory hair cells in the inner ear. There are two major classes of these drugs that cause hearing loss. One class is the aminoglycoside antibiotics. They're among the most widely used and successful antibiotics in the world, but they cause a significant permanent hearing loss in about 25% of patients who receive the drugs. The other major class of drugs that kills these cells um, is the anti-cancer drug cisplatin, which is easily the most widely used and effective anti-cancer drug in the world. This is a terrific drug. It saves millions of lives. But it also causes significant permanent hearing loss in a, in a high proportion of the people who take the drug. We image these hair cells dying, so we give them drugs that cause those hair cells to die. And then we look at what the supporting cells do once those hair cells die from different types of drugs. And so what we can see is that when a hair cell is sort of on the cusp of dying, um, just before it dies or just after it dies, we're still trying to figure out exactly which. The supporting cell comes in and squeezes that hair cell right, right, at, right at the top, just, just under the very top. Um, and it sort of breaks that neck, decapitating that hair cell. And then it comes in and cleans up the rest of that dead hair cell, sort of keeping the, the tissue relatively clean. Um, and so we image that process and we see how it differs depending on which drug we're giving the tissue. There are two major questions under study in our laboratory. First is why do these drugs cause sensory hair cell death? And what are the cellular and molecular mechanisms that determine whether a sensory hair cell, when it's under stress, will ultimately live or die? Our recent experiments have shown that supporting cells in response to hair cell stress will secrete molecules that protect and prevent hair cells from dying. This is exciting because this means that these signals of survival and death are coming from the supporting cells and not the hair cell itself. This is also exciting because this means that the supporting cells are actually able to sense the stress that the hair cell is going under and be able to prevent these stressed hair cells from dying. My current experiments are focusing on determining how the supporting cells are receiving and responding to the hair cell stress and the molecular mechanisms by which they protect the hair cells. The second question under study in the laboratory is translational, and that is, how do we use this information about hair cell death and hair survival to develop clinical therapies that will protect the inner ear in patients receiving these drugs? We know that in a variety of systems, you can stress the system um, a little bit and uh, induce a stress-induced protective response. So that's what this project is about. 
And what we've been doing is um, treating animals with um, noise, a level of noise that is loud enough to stress the inner ear, but not loud enough to cause a noise-induced hearing loss. So we're sort of threading the needle there. And when we do that, we can generate an intrinsic protective response in the inner ear that um, can protect the hair cells, according to Showman's data, um, against this ototoxic drug-induced hearing loss. So some of that work is going on in this room. What Andrew is doing is dissecting a cochlea from one of these animals. And uh, so this is what the adult mouse cochlea looks like. And we call this the apex. And the cochlea is a snail-shaped organ that spirals around to the base down here. We hear low frequencies here at the apex and high frequencies here at the base. And there are hair cells all along this epithelium. And so Andrew will dissect this cochlea apart and um, prepare it in a way that will allow us to evaluate the health of the hair cells and the supporting cells. And Showman is looking at a cochlea that has already been prepared in this manner, and this microscope allows us to do that. And um, what Showman's preparation shows is the three rows of outer hair cells, if you would point those out. There are three rows of outer hair cells, which are these red pieces, red cells here, and a single row of inner hair cells. And this is what the adult mammalian cochlea looks like when it's nice and healthy. And one of the lovely things about being at NIH is that the NIH Clinical Center has the um, largest center for clinical trials in the world. And so there are patients there who are already receiving these drugs. Um, the, uh, ototoxic aminoglycoside antibiotics and cisplatin. So we can partner with our partners at the clinical center to see if we can develop a therapy that can protect the hearing in those patients.